Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to our Minecraft Vanilla Let's Play series. Um, so today, what we are going to be doing is we're going to continue working on the monastery, and we're actually going to be starting off with the catacombs. Starting the catacombs, not finishing the catacombs, it's going to be an ongoing thing, and we'll talk more about that uh, once we get into building it. Um, and I also want to take a bit of time after we get it built uh, to cover one thing in particular. Uh, just so if anybody has questions about how it works... I'll be able to show it off and everything. So, anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the catacombs build. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to be working on is the catacombs. Uh, and there's going to be a small entrance down here, kind of sitting beneath the monastery, is what I'm thinking. And, uh, basically the catacombs, the purpose of it is going to be kind of twofold. Well, technically kind of threefold. Um, first up, it's going to give us a place to store all of our mob heads because, of course, we do have the data pack so that mobs can drop their heads. And in addition, we have the, the uh, data pack where we can get player heads, right? And so, first up, we're going to store mob heads down here. It's kind of like just a general display of, of the different mob heads that we collect. And hopefully, eventually, we'll have all of them. I am going to be storing duplicates, so it's not going to be just one of every possible mob head. It's going to be just every mob head that we get our hands on. We'll probably go down here. Um, now, the second purpose of this is to give us a fun, kind of ongoing underground build to work on. Not really work on it till it's done. Just kind of ever so often pop back down here, do a bit of work on it, maybe another level or something like that. Um, and we can just kind of expand it. Because whenever I think of catacombs, my mind immediately goes to, you know, the catacombs of Paris. That's where my my brain goes. And so I want to kind of, not necessarily replicate that in the style, but I want it to be kind of this ne almost never-ending, twisting, cavernous sort of catacombs where when you go down into it, it's like you just keep going down and down and down, and there's just these winding pathways, and eventually, you know, if you're not familiar with the place, you might get lost. That's my goal. Now, in this initial section of the catacombs, it's going to be a lot smaller of an area, just three wide, uh, what, like three tall, um, roughly. And so it's kind of compact, but as we get deeper, because right now I don't have a lot of space, right? Because I'm literally, as I'm building this, I'm breaking out of the mountain in spots, and I'm having to go back out there, and I do have to fix a bit of the exterior around the monastery because our catacombs have kind of popped through. Um, those of you that have watched the channel for very long, you know I like to fit as much as I possibly can into spaces so that it feels like everything's kind of stacked and built and you know that's like the Enigmatica build I had a lot of questions about how does all this even fit because it was all pretty much wall to wall um, with sections if, if that makes sense but um, so that's kind of what we're doing here so it is a bit tighter of a space but as we go deeper and we have a bit more space to work with we'll make areas with higher ceilings We'll make, you know, maybe bridges and things like that that uh, you cross and pillars supporting larger rooms and stuff. Um, and the other purpose for this build is I want to have a place to display um, player heads. And so patrons on the channel and stuff, I can put, or patrons for the channel, uh, I'm going to be setting up displays for, um, you know, using their heads and putting up displays uh, with name tag or, you know, placards with their names on them. Um, in you know each spot so you see the armor stands that are around we're going to be covering those and setting up um, player displays so you know the different patrons on the channel I do have a little um, a little uh, thing on discord so if if you want if you haven't put your name on there go ahead and put your in-game name um, just go ahead and put it on there because we're doing like a little checklist and just uh, Tyler spawning in heads. You don't have to get on the server for me to kill you, but Tyler spawning in heads so I don't have to decapitate everybody. And um, and then he's just he's bringing the heads over and putting them in a chest, and then I'm I'm setting up statues um, for everybody. So um, now we're gonna pop outside for the remainder of the speed build. It's not a very long speed build, um, just a few minutes because I wanted to spend the back end of the episode. This is kind of to help those of you that are on the server and, you know, if you're if you're running data packs and you want to know how the Armor Stands mod works, I want to share what I've learned about it. Um, it was actually my first time using it, but it doesn't seem very difficult at all. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. 
but I kind of want to go over everything that's on there and how you, the biggest part for me was figuring out how to make the book. You know, it was brought up like, oh yeah, we can use armor stands for this. And it was like, okay, how do I use the book for this? <laughs> or how do I make the book for this? Um, but once I figured that out, out that out, it was, uh, it was all pretty, pretty self-explanatory and, uh, pretty straightforward to use, but, um, I do want to make at least one statue on camera with you guys, um, and get that set up. So, and now we are just kind of building out the front of it, um, where you're actually going to enter. Um, the catacombs is a bit darker. Um, at first I considered brightening it up, but it was like, you know what? This is the catacombs. It wouldn't be a bright place, but I think the glowstone really works because it almost feels like candles uh, down in this area. Of course, we don't actually have really candles. I guess there's torches, but um, I don't think those are a uh, good substitute for candles. I think over, overall the glowstone worked pretty well, and uh, I'm pretty happy with the build so far. We really just got the first level done. Um, it didn't take too long to do. Um, but it was a bit fun, and I think it'll be a fun build as it as it continues to expand downwards for us. Um, I do think, though, next episode we're going to be going back above ground, doing some work up there. And then, like I said, we'll just kind of pop down um, and work on the catacombs. Um, there's no real rhyme or reason to the way the statues are laid out or the armors or anything like that. Um, it, most of the armors will be in silver and gold, or uh, iron and gold. Yeah, there's no real method to it. Um, and I'm just kind of putting statues, the first ones that put their names in, I put those on the top layer, and then we'll keep building down, so. Okay, so that's where we've gotten to so far. We still have a lot of work to do on the exterior. The interior, we still have a bit of work, but it's going to be, like I said, it's going to be an ongoing thing. Uh, that we're going to be working on throughout, um, you know, pretty much, it's pretty much just going to be an ongoing open-ended build. Um, I do want to add a bit of decor out here, some trees and things like that to spruce it up, and we'll get into that, but uh, maybe, maybe this episode, but I do want to start the library. I know we're not going to get the monastery built. It's still going to be probably a couple episodes yet, <laughs> because it's going to just keep, it just keeps getting bigger and we keep adding things to it, but... Um, but anyways, if we pop inside, um, it is a bit dark in here, but I was going for something dark. I mean, this is, this is a catacombs, you know, um, and I am using the armor stand, the statues, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about that if you guys have never, you know, just in case you guys have never done it, if you're on the server or something like that, and you're wanting to set up statues, um, I'll be showing you, um, the basics of how to set them up. Uh, and then you can, of course, play around in the, uh, in the settings and stuff like that. Um, over here, Tyler's been just popping on each day and gathering up all of the player heads. Um, he's been making a stack of them. I've only been using one of each so far, but, you know, I may end up using uh, some more in places. So my idea for the catacombs is it's a place to store all of our mob heads, for starters, because, you know, we do have mob heads enabled. Um, so you can see, like, we've got lot, the different trader llamas, and we've got, which they look, they actually look about the same, but you can kind of tell that this one's a little bit more tan than this one I think but uh, I don't know there's two different ones I think those are different ones I believe so let me I don't think that they stack so that's the creamy trader llama's head and I think this is the white no it's the gray uh, trader llama's head so but they look almost identical in the lighting uh, and skeleton horses and all that and then down in here we have a bunch more lined up so what I was working on back here, as you can see, um, we are actually setting up statues. And this will be for everybody that's, uh, you know, all the patrons for the channel and everything. I'm not totally done with these. I've still got to add some little uh, decor and stuff, but some of them are, you know, kind of sorted. Um, Joe Mega, of course, I had to give him a fish because he's a penguin. <laughs> so um, set him up and then Sarath uh, over here, looking cool with his interpearl. Uh, of course, he's the dev for, you know, FTB interactions. Um, so I set him up over on this side. And uh, over here, Tyler hanging out. And of course, I had to set a brewing stand over here because when I went out exploring early on uh, in the server life, he's like, I need a brewing stand. But he hadn't been to the nether. And so I found a bunch of brewing stands and I gave him one. So I had to give him another one for his statue. 
Um, over here we have J. Call 87. Uh, it's hanging out. Um, this is actually a gold block head. Um, we have the Wandering Traders plug in so they can sell like basically miniatures of blocks. You get eight of them for one of the block and an emerald. Um, so I'll just be adding some of those in as well. I'm not going to do like head stands like the rest of our heads because you know they're not um, technically heads. I don't think of them as heads, but um, we are going to be setting up some of those down here. And then if we continue on over here, we have the Squid Man. Um, over on this side, and by the way, the armors are just, I'm just kind of mixing them up. Um, you know, gold and iron, just kind of mixing it up. So there's not really any um, particular, you know, pattern or rhyme or reason as to the, the armors that everybody's wearing. I'm just mixing it up um, as I go through here. So um, over here, we have John Wag. And then over on this side, Zerani, which I haven't set, you know, these I haven't set up entirely um, because they do take a little bit to set up, so I haven't got around to all of them yet, um, but it's an ongoing project. And then over here we have Purely Platonic, um, who's actually, I know uh, Purely likes building a lot and is currently working on actually one of the builds for Tails, and so I figure, well, I'll set Purely up with a little building uh, type statue. So I'm kind of looking at the glowstone, like glowstone or blackstone, what do I want to do? Um, plus I know Purely likes blackstone a lot. So, um, And then back in here, this is just empty space. There is a pillager head back here. But um, these, I haven't got, there's still a lot of people to get heads of and put them on here. Um, but it's, you know, it takes a little bit to get them all set up. And then this is going to go downwards. And my plan is that this will go down another layer. Um, and there'll be another catacombs layer, and then that'll go down another layer, and then down another layer. And eventually, you know, we'll come to a point, like right now I have to make these kind of small because um, I actually busted through the wall here and had to adjust the outer wall. Because right back there, right past there is kind of like where our steps go up to the, um, you know, to this whole area. So I had to, I had to adjust things out there. And so I had to make this kind of small, but then we'll go down a layer. It'll be slightly larger, but I still have to keep it on the small side. But eventually, once we get well underground, then I can make big areas, um, and I want to make rather large uh, spaces, and then make it almost like a labyrinth. So hopefully get to the point where you go down there, and you might get lost, <laughs> and it'll take forever to find your way back out if you're not familiar with the labyrinth so, or with the catacombs. Um, I think it'll be a bit fun and something that we can just kind of have ongoing uh, throughout the uh, throughout the server. So um, and just fill it up with uh, statues. So um, and then over here we have Sveard, and we are actually going to be setting up his statue um, on camera because I want to talk about how to use the statues mod. And the very first thing that you're going to want to do is make a written book. You can write, it doesn't matter what you write in it, but then just go ahead and sign it and for the title, put statues with a capital S. And that's going to get you, it has to be a capital S, but that's gonna get you this book right here. Statues version 2.7 or whatever version it is by Stick God Original. Um, and that's the book that we're gonna be using to kind of set up our statues. And the cool thing, we're not gonna be doing it today, but you can even make, um, you could turn your armor stands into kind of flat um, invisible item frames almost so you can have like food sitting flush with the ground or you know on a table um, you can make miniature versions of things like um, you know you could have a miniature furnace or something like that um, there's just a whole lot you can do with it I'm still learning it I just kind of picked it up and started winging it so this isn't gonna be like a super um, comprehensive in-depth little tutorial on the statues mod but I do just want to cover the basics of it, and then, of course, you can play around with it. It's pretty self-explanatory, to be honest. Um, it's not too difficult. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're just going to right-click, and uh, you can do the check target, but um, with shaders on it, it doesn't highlight. If you don't have the shaders on, it will highlight uh, the statue. But in this case, it's always going to highlight the one that you're closest to, or you're going to be targeted to the one that you're closest to. So this is the only one that's down here. So um, We're going to go ahead and turn off the base plate. Because I don't want to show that. Um, we're going to go ahead and turn off gravity. So that way if this block gets broken it's not going to fall. Um, we're going to go ahead and say show arms. There we go. 
and uh, you can do a small stand. So if we want to make Sphere a little kid, we can do that. <laughs> I had Tyler as a little kid for a short period of time. Um, stand visible. If you hit no, it's going to make the entire stand except for equipped items invisible. Um, but we don't want that. We want to keep the stand visible. Um, and then the last thing here, display name. Um, I did try displaying the name. Actually, the, the Tyler statue that's over here is named. Because this was my first statue that I was just testing around. Um, this statue is named. But the name actually goes up into the blocks above it. And so, basically, you can't read it. It just looks like a black border. Um, or a black kind of banner that you can see kind of through these blocks. Uh, but you can actually make out what it says. So I'm not going to have names on. I'm just putting these little name placards in front of it. Um, and by the way, as far as this build goes, just a quick mention, this is pretty much all basalt, nether brick, and dark stone. So it's like basalt, basalt, that's that's the uh, polished basalt, nether bricks all throughout, um, black stone there, down through here, and then of course we have a little bit of glowstone in there. So I just kind of want to go with something a little bit dark and gritty compared to the stuff that we've been building thus far because once again it's going to go down underground and I want it to be, um, I, in a way it's kind of creepy because Tyler's like, I just imagine he's going to step off that stand here in a minute and start running over here. But um, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and equip Sveard with, uh, let's give him that. And I find it's easier to go ahead and equip your offhand. The only exception is something like a shield. Um, shield seems to always go to your offhand, but blocks, um, like for example, if I try to equip a sword now, it's going to switch back and forth, you know. Um, so I find it's easier to just put your offhand block and then go over to this tab. And I'm going to go ahead and just swap slots and say main hand to offhand. Uh, you can also do the same thing with the head, but I never really use that because it does accept the heads without issue. But we're going to go ahead and say offhand. It's going to switch that uh, ancient debris over uh, to his offhand. And then we're going to give him a diamond sword. So we've got him equipped now. Um, and then what we're going to do, um, if we go through here, this right here is nudging. Um, and the way this works, I don't have any clue what this does. Um, to be, honest, to be perfectly honest, I played around with it, but I couldn't make heads or tails of it. Um, but what I look at is this and this if I want to nudge. Um, there's only a couple statues that I have nudged. Um, Sarah's statue I did nudge just so his leg was sitting a little bit more flush, kind of kicked back um, against that glowstone. So I did kind of nudge the statue back. Um, but when you're looking at the nudge, you need to look at your X, Y, Z coordinates. So uh, if we look up here... You could see X, Y, Z there um, in this little section here, X, Y, Z. Um, so basically, if you want to find your X, just move like this is my X coordinate or this is my X axis. Uh, moving left and uh, right is my Z coordinates. Then up and down, of course, is my Y, um, my Y axis. So if you want to nudge it, um, just find that and do negative or positive negative or positive, negative or positive, however you want to do it. Now, relative aligned is based on your position. Um, the y-axis is always, it's not going to be in relative aligned because y-axis, no matter where you're standing, it doesn't matter, y-axis is still the same thing. Up is up and down is down. Um, but your x and z coordinates, basically this will move it, like if I do relative aligned and I say negative 8, you could say he's going to move over to the left. Um, and then if I come over here and I say plus 8, He's going to move back. If I come over to this side now and I say plus 8, he's going to move forward. And then if I say negative 8, he's going to move back. Um, so it's completely relative to your position and it's not based on the actual X, Y, Z coordinates uh, for that one. So if you want to nudge, you can do that. And this right here is where you can adjust the rotation. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, so if I want to turn to the left, I can do that. Um, and if I want to say turn away from me he's going to turn around and then if I say turn towards me he's going to turn towards me um, the pointing this is for like for example um, and the arms are going to be relative to the statues so this is going to be his right arm even though it's on my left it's going to be his right arm um, and this will be his left arm and the same is true for the legs. So if I wanted to point the right arm, um, I could say point it to your head, 
and he's going to lift it up and put his sword forward. And if I said point it to your feet, he's going to drop it down a bit and point it more towards his feet. So I don't use that too much, but if I want to quickly set a body part to a certain, um, you know, a certain area, then I can use that to kind of adjust um, and get it roughly to where I want it. And then I can do a little bit more with the, uh, with this towel, which we're going to talk about. Um, this right here is just preset. So if I want him to stand at attention, I could do that. If I want him to, um, like for example, the statues that are up at the front of the catacombs, like up top, they're actually set to a lunging, just slightly alterated lunging position. And lunging is like that, like they're kind of running forward. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different presets here. Um, and I don't really know the purpose for this line. It's on here regardless of what I click. Uh, it's always here. So I guess because this is like poses and this goes to randomize, but like block an item, um, you know, they still do things. So I'm not really sure about that. I have no clue. Randomize sometimes comes out funny uh, with some really strange, um, strange poses that you can come out with. Yeah, there we go. That's perfect. There's Sphered Statue. <laughs> now, but let's go, uh, let's see. Oh, and Purely Platonics, I set it to the sitting position, then I had to nudge it down um, so that it would set flush with the block. And when you're nudging, um, these are basically pixels that you can move. So, you know, for Purely's, I went down negative eight, negative eight, until I got close, and then I went to like negative three, and then negative one, until I got it just flush with that dark stone. So this is going to be your pixels. Uh, those of you that are into modded, you're probably familiar with counting your pixels. But if you're not, um, you know, because stuff like chisels and bits and little tiles, you're going to be paying a lot of attention to your pixels. But if you look real close, like that's a pixel. 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 Um, each block, of course, is 16 by 16 by 16 pixels uh, in size. So that's how we can adjust that. Um, but let's pick a preset for uh, Sphere. Let's do, uh, what's this one? No. Nah. There's a couple like that where the blocks, they don't work out. Uh, that's the same one. I don't know why I picked it again. Uh, let's do the pointing. I think this will be kind of cool. And then what we can do, this is where it actually starts to get a lot of fun. Um, we can play with the XYZ for the head body, right arm, left arm, right leg, and left leg. I don't really mess with the body too much. It gets really, really weird. Um, for example, if I was to do negative Z, <laughs> you could see, I mean, I guess you could have people like jumping, but you could do some really weird things with it. Like if we keep messing with it here, um, we can have his body go all over the place. You can kind of do it with the legs too, but it takes a little bit more work to get them going in really weird positions. So there we go, there's the feared. <laughs> Now let me let me send it back to uh, if you ever if you ever mess up just go back to your presets and set it uh, back there. Um, but let's go, let's turn his head. Uh, let's do and this doesn't work. I'm still trying to remember these, but they don't necessarily work. Like X tilts his head backwards. Um, but I don't really notice necessarily a correlation between X, Y, Z coordinates. Because if I do Z, this is going to cause his head to tilt. Um, I mean, I guess this is the X, uh, the X axis and this is the Z axis. But I find that it, it doesn't work the way that in my mind I think it will, you know. So I tend to just have to like play around with it um, and adjust it. So let's do Y... And let's do a, I feel like the tilt is so much more on this one than my other ones. Like a lot of my other ones, I adjusted the head and I was able to get them into a good spot. But for some reason, this pointing, he really wants to tilt his head in really awkward positions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate five degrees and I'm going to rotate him just slightly because otherwise his head's going to be in a really weird spot, like looking off at the wall. That's not really what I want. So we're going to rotate him around like that. Now what we're going to do, uh, let's, let's 
go back to this and I'm just gonna bring down his head just a little bit so he's kind of looking down at us I tend to like my my statues looking down just because uh, if they're looking up or anything like that I don't know it just it feels weird so I, I like the statues looking kind of down towards us because we're kind of sitting down beneath them and that way we can actually see their faces and stuff uh, with them facing that way Now let's also, let's see, his right arm, let's do a little bit with that. Do that, and then let's drop it. Just over, and now let me bring it down just a little bit. Just a little bit more. There we go. And then his left arm, I want to bring that forward. So we'll just go plus on the X, kind of bring it out a little bit from him. Just so it's not right up against his body um, because it makes the block look funny to me whenever it's right up against them like that. All right. See, I think I still want the right arm to come down a bit more though. and a bit out so we're going to be going with the y-axis so something like that and then I'm going to adjust his right leg just a little bit so that it's not right up against the other one um, let's see let's bring it out on the x-axis just a little bit so it's kind of like he's stepping forward with his sword uh, just a little bit and then we're going to See the head. I'm just going to tilt it slightly. Um, that way it's not so rigid looking. Um, and then, let's see. That's good. A lot of this tells you what it does. Um, so this is where if you want to have a block setting flat on something, uh, you can do that. You can do the tool racks, things like that. Um, and this is all pretty self-explanatory because it does uh, describe it on here. Um, and then there's this tab and this tab and then there is a credits tab at the back. Uh, this tab, if you want to mirror the arms and legs, you can do that. So um, if you want to mirror the left leg to the right leg or the right leg to the left leg um, or vice versa with the, or the same thing with the legs, you can do that um, and flip it. And if, if we were to flip it, it would be like that. Oh, I actually kind of like that. <laughs> It didn't flip exactly like I was expecting it to. Because um, it doesn't look so much like he's looking at the sword here. But when I do this, it looks like he's looking like kind of proudly at his uh, ancient debris. Yeah, let's go with that. And then his legs kind of kick. Yeah, I like that a lot. I think that looks pretty good. Um, I do want to, in this case, I do want to adjust him uh, just slightly. like that so he's kind of holding out showing it off and looking at it he's proud of his ancient debris and then uh, back over to here um, we'll get to this in just a second invisible item frame um, and all this stuff by the way you can see right here um, what this does but this is basically going to give you a item frame um, via your armor stand that's going to be invisible um, I haven't played around with that too much, but probably once we do some interior decor, maybe we want food on the table, things like that, we may end up using this stuff a bit more. But um, for these, I'm not using half these features, so because I just don't need them. Um, but over here, we can copy and paste. So if I want to copy this statue and make a duplicate, I actually did that on the statues, you know, at the at the catacomb entrance because they're kind of positioned the same way. I wanted to copy them. You know, they're just reversed from each other. So I did use the copy-paste feature there for that. Um, but all the rest of these I'm doing, you know, just going in and doing them um, from scratch. So, and then what I'm going to do, lock and unlock. Um, lock basically means that I can't mess this up. So if I have another statue near it, um, in the case of Jomega and Sarath, you know, I locked them. 
and that way I wouldn't mess up the other if I was too far away from it because right now if I was to go in and I said uh, you know show base plate yes it's not going to show a base plate on him um, it's probably like if I stand over here it's probably going to find squid I imagine show base plate no I didn't find squid oh it actually didn't find any I think I'm too far away from any of those for it to register so but that way if, if they're very close I don't have to worry about messing them up um, and then I'm going to seal it um, what's nice about the seal feature is nothing can kill this like if a creeper explodes right on top of it it's not gonna mess up armor stand it's gonna stay here it's made of steel now at this point uh, and so that way once they're done once they're set I don't want these to ever get moved or broken down or anything like that so I'm just gonna seal them and that way I don't have to worry about that so and that's basically all there is to it I mean like I said there's some other features you can play around in here um, there is information which pretty much is going to tell you exactly how to uh, to do all of this um, for me the hardest part of this mod was figuring out how to make the book that was it <laughs> because once I figured out how to make the book it's all written here um, in these little information sections so uh, this tab doesn't have it but it's it's super self-explanatory here I think um, as to what that does so very easy to play around with and a whole lot of fun and you can kind of you can really you know mess around with it so you have some really living like um, stuff going on so um, you know I'm trying to do different poses and things and give them equipment like I feel like you know they may want um, but we can do all kinds of stuff with that and uh, we can even make little kid statues <laughs> so um, but yeah, so anyways, I just wanted to take a moment during this episode and show you that. Um, I know it's going to cut into our building time, but I feel like it's important to at least cover that because I'm setting up a bunch of these statues. Actually, I just looked at the uh, the amount of footage that I have in the time, and it is a wrapping up point, unfortunately. We didn't get as much building done, but we did get the catacombs started. And that's actually, I mean, this took probably a bit longer than you might expect. Um, a lot of decor and actually a lot of off-camera stuff setting up statues and I still have some more statues to set up um, so it's a good start um, we didn't quite get over to the library and stuff which I was planning on doing this episode uh, but I promise we're gonna get to that next episode and start working on the library I actually have some really big plans for it um, I was actually loading up my inventory with stuff for the library but unfortunately it is wrapping up point so I hope you guys like the catacombs build and I hope you guys like uh, kind of where this is going um, I'm going to continue adding statues. I've got enough to fit. Uh, I'm basically, I've got a little um, section for, on the Discord, um, you know, if you are a patron to the channel, it's down in the patron section of the Discord, just drop your name in there. Uh, but I do have spice, two more spaces on this floor to add in statues, so I want to get those added in, and then I'm going to start building downwards and building out the next section of the labyrinth. Some of the build, some of this build may be off camera, some of it will be on camera. Um, it is a little bit finicky sometimes dealing with interior spaces. Um, so I tend, I mean, it's a little bit easier, honestly, in 1.16 than it is in the 1.12 versions of Replay Mod. It's a whole lot easier uh, to deal with it because it doesn't, uh, 1.12 Replay, it honestly, it runs horribly. So it's really difficult to do much of anything because every time you make an edit, you have to wait like a minute for it to reload. Uh, to be able to check your edit and then if it's wrong you have to adjust it and you have to wait out like another minute it takes forever to edit 1.12 replay footage it's a whole lot faster for 1.16 so um but i'll do some of the some of the building some of the spaces once we get a little bit farther down are going to be very large but some of these are um, a little bit tighter corridors i'm kind of building with a fairly small amount of space under this mountain so i'm working with what i got so um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I know it ended up being kind of more of working with statues, but uh, for the, I think the majority of it. But I did want to show that on camera for those of you that are playing on the server if you want to use it. So it's available to everybody on the server, of course. So um, And once again, I want to just go back over just so everybody knows. We have the mob heads. We have player heads. So if you die, you're probably going to get a player head. But instead of making everybody get on and let me decapitate them... Um, <laughs> We're just using commands to get these um, for everybody that's going in the catacombs. Um, also, Tyler brought up doing kind of a thing um, where we'll select some names and, uh, you know, add... I missed a lantern there. Whoops. 
I'll go get it later and put it up there. But um, doing kind of like a drawing and put some, uh, you know, non-patron uh, people statues into the catacombs so we can do that as well. But at the moment, I'm trying to get all the all the patron members in here. Um, so I've got a few layers that I've got to build out to get everybody in here, and then, uh, you know, then we'll we'll start building out some bigger spaces and stuff. And I do want to fill out this with mob heads too. But anyways, I'm kind of rambling. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. I will see you guys next time. And I promise we'll get to the library build <laughs> next time. So I'll see you guys then.